Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Fred Steinman. I'm an assistant research professor at the College of Business at the University of Nevada, Reno, and I also serve currently as the director for the Northern section of the Nevada chapter of the American Planning Association. I'd like to welcome all of you today to another online educational luncheon hosted by the Northern section of the Nevada chapter of the American Planning Association. Uh, today, we have Eric Jensen, who is a revitalization and grants manager for the city of Reno, and Dean Stanfill, principal engineering and environmental manager for Universal Engineering Services. They'll be giving a 30 or so minute, minute presentation regarding redevelopment and revitalization efforts in downtown Reno. It's my pleasure to now hand over the reins of this presentation and session uh, to the one and only duo of Eric Jensen <laughs> and Dean Stanfill. Dean and Eric, feel free to take over whenever you're ready. Fred, thank you very much. You know, it's our pleasure to, uh, to present to you and the American Planning Association group. And we were just, again, so happy and thrilled that you're allowing us to uh, make this presentation. Part of what Eric and I really feel passionately about is the city of Reno, how, uh, and how we have a great story to tell on what the city's doing with regards to redevelopment and revitalization of their downtown core. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the US EPA Bromfields Grant Program. And then from there, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some of the, uh, you know, the target areas and some of the thought that went into identifying key uh, strategic areas to help, help the community. The US EPA Brownfields Grant uh, is a competitive process. The city of Reno had to write an extensive grant application Part of that grant application is to identify the needs of the community, identify uh, certain challenges, and identify how the city's going to go about, well, the city and the coalition partners are going to go about achieving those goals. Again, the, uh, it's a very competitive process. Um, I don't know the exact numbers. I'm thinking that out of maybe 100 people that apply, you know, probably 20 people are awarded the money. And uh, it's, again, it's a very difficult, uh, very difficult grant to obtain, but the city of Reno and the coalition partners did a great job in being able to obtain the funding. So the US EPA awarded the city of Reno and its coalition partners $600,000. This $600,000, uh, again, is used specifically to help revitalize the downtown uh, corridor. As I discussed, the uh, coalition partners consist of the city of Reno, the Community Foundation of Western Nevada, the Redevelopment Agency of the city of Reno, with support and guidance of EPA Region 9. You know, part of it is EP, the EPA Region 9 provides a lot of latitude to the city in the manner in which they exercise this grant. And they are truly providing, uh, again, assistance, support, and guidance. And I guess stepping back a little bit, you know, and, and unlike a lot of grants perhaps, but US EPA Region 9, the focus of this whole program is to result in successful redevelopment. So they're not looking at you know, bits and pieces. At the end of the day, they want to see a wonderful community driven redevelopment of the, uh, of the downtown area. And Eric's going to go over some great examples of what actually has been, been successful so far. You know, again, the goal and purpose is to facilitate that new development and reuse of existing development by funding environmental investigations and planning for any, within the context of the appropriate uses. You know, so many times, and I know that some of you folks have been, you know, in the downtown Reno area, you have certain properties, maybe they're somewhat dilapidated, maybe they're, uh, you know, certainly not being used and utilized for their, uh, you know, intended purpose. But as far as having a new develop, developer coming in, and redeveloping that parcel. You know, there's certain headwinds, certain constraints they're worried about, you know, environmental issues from 
you know, past, uh, you know, perhaps a historic dry cleaner was on the site, perhaps, you know, there's some existing buildings with, with uh, lead based paint and uh, asbestos in the building that's going to be a huge constraint to development. Maybe there's some questions as far as well, what, where is the backbone infrastructure? Is the infrastructure sufficient to support this, uh, you know, this development? Is the planning, is the zoning correct? This grant helps provide all those answers and the idea is for it to help kind of stimulate the development of these areas where there may not be any developer interest previously. Again, the uh, grant funds are typically used for environmental studies, reuse planning, some preliminary engineering. Again, the whole focus of this is to bring to a developer or bring to the community for that matter, a property that is ready to be developed. Again, it's in all our best interest on many of these properties downtown, many of these vacant parcels downtown. It is going to be so wonderful when those are those are redeveloped and help really invigorate that downtown economy. Again, funding is cannot necessarily be used for cleanup or mitigation unless that's necessary to perform the environmental investigation. There are some rules, but I would tell you that the EPA is very, very uh, conscious of helping communities develop these properties. Both public and private development is eligible. I mean, part of the thing, certainly the city can develop parks, they can develop uh, civic uh, projects. But also, if you have a developer that comes in and says, you know, I, I, I'm really interested in doing some mixed use housing in the downtown corridor, we can help or the fund can help identify those properties and clear those properties from an environmental standpoint. So that takes perhaps part of the stigma away from those properties and again, helps uh, really helps focus and make that development or the potential development a reality. The city of Reno administers the grant. Uh, Eric Jensen, who is going to be speaking soon, is on the line. You have his contact information there. And also Jeff Limper. And again, we're currently we're working on developing various checklists, various applications, so that if any of you know of any potential development or property in the downtown area that you would like to investigate if this grant might be appropriate and applicable to that property. Uh, those are the folks that you would, you know, reach out to. And as a team, we would look to see how, how we can best help you. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to, uh, to Eric Jensen. And he's going to talk a little bit about, you know, the target areas, where these properties are, help tell the story about some of the successes of the city of Reno so far and some of the challenges ahead. And, and, and with that, I'd like to introduce Eric Jensen with the city of Reno. Thank you, Dean. I appreciate that. Um, very happy to be partnering with Dean and with uh, Universal Engineering. You may have uh, probably most of you know Dean through uh, the previous company, Nova Geotech, who have been here in our area for a long time and who um, was very gracious to um, donate a significant amount of time and resources for one of our city projects that we'll talk about in a moment. So what you have before you here is, a, this is a very simple map with this particular grant, you don't have a hard and fast physical boundary of where the money can be used. Instead, um, in the process, we created a plan and a scope of work. And in that work plan, we said that generally speaking, we were focusing on the downtown area um, within three blocks north and south of the retrack line, which is roughly Third Street in, in our downtown. And so, and then in addition to that, we um, put we, we had to identify some target areas. So we identified three target areas within the general work plan scope. One, um, the east is uh, site is over near Wells Avenue. So if you know uh, where Wells crosses the river and retrack, this is the area immediately um, east of that there where the city owns land and there's also privately owned um, land. Uh, another area is the area around our, our uh, downtown around our ballpark. 
So the, uh, the large parking lot area that's part of the ballpark um, on both sides of um, Second Street and the areas immediately surrounding it, um, that's what we call our central priority site. And then our west priority site is, um, uh, again, adjacent to Retrack or uh, Retrack bisects it. Um, this is a mix of city owned land and privately owned land. Uh, much of this land the city acquired when we built Retrack, we had to acquire this extra ground as part of the uh, shoe track alignment. And so we had became the de facto, well, we became the owners of it. And so now we are in the process of selling that ground. And of course there is um, both imagined and real um, uh, contamination on the properties. And so this grant will help us to study and to um, be able to sell those properties and to alleviate some of the, uh, the, the concerns that developers have when acquiring them from us. So do you need to go to the next slide? There we go. So again, this is what I just told you. Um, part of the, um, one of the things that it's, it's important to understand is that this grant does not pay for cleanup. It pays for the study of cleanup. It pays for creating plans to clean it up. It uh, pays for uh, working uh, with, uh, for marketing properties potentially, um, but it doesn't um, pay for the actual cleanup. So the way it works is EPA um, likes communities to get these grants and to go through and identify the properties that need to be cleaned up or that have issues and to create plans or strategies for um, developing those properties. And then once that's done, then they like you to come and apply for the actual grants to do the cleanup. So this is sort of a precursor. It, it helps you get your foot in the door. It helps EPA um, uh, you know, feel comfortable that if they award you a cleanup grant, that it's actually gonna work, that you're not gonna sit on the money or you're not gonna use it for something that um, is not productive. As Dean said, their goal at the end of the day is they want to have projects that are built. And the reason why they want projects built is because it helps them to go back to their, their Congress people and to um, others and to say, we need more money. You know, fund us again next year because we did these great things. Here's, you gave us money and we did what we, would, we told you we would do with it. So fund us again. So that's EPA's motivation to some part, other than the, 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 their typical and, and you know, inherent motivation to clean the environment, which is absolutely you know, first and foremost in their line. But, uh, but then this, you know, on the second um, track, they wanna be funded every year. And so they want successful, they want stories that say, we did what we said we would. And so that's part of it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, sorry, wrong direction. Oh, no, I just put it up again. Sorry, okay. So here are some important principles. Sorry, Dean, go. No, that was okay. You can go. There we go. So environmental justice, that's big on EPA's agenda. They want to improve areas and they want to address areas with socioeconomic um, issues. Uh, environmental remediation, restoring the natural environment. Obviously, that's a, that's a key EPA goal. Sustainability. You know, maybe 20 years ago, that wasn't as, as important, but sustainability is very important to EPA right now. And then also that there be a context sensitive appropriate um, uh, projects. So in other words, whatever is built, it needs to fit into the city's goals and strategies, but it also needs to fit into EPA's goals and strategies. Uh, next slide, please. So here's a project that Dean and I are both gonna talk about. Dean's going to talk about his side as the um, firm that volunteered and donated time and resources to making this happen. And I'm going to talk about the city side. So very simply, the Village on Sage was, is a um, project that was built on some of the retrack ground, some of this land, uh, former railroad land that the city acquired to build the retrack project. Mm -hmm. And um, the city, as in many areas in the state, has a, a housing, I don't want to call it a housing crisis, but that's what our mayor called it. And uh, particularly on the very, very low income level, um, we did not have units 
that people who were making minimum wage could afford to live in. And so a, a group of developers and the Community Foundation of Western Nevada and the city all got together and they, they found these quote unquote man camps, which basically are um, dormitory style uh, units that can be assembled together that are modular. They found them in Wyoming. They had been part of a gas oil um, exploration area. They were not being used. They were in excellent condition. And the owner of them said that he would sell them and finance it at virtually, you know, at cost and, give them to, and sell them to the city. And so the, um, the city uh, puts together this coalition again with Community Foundation of Western Nevada and this, um, develop, these developers who donated their time to help make it happen. And um, they brought these here, they set them up and it's a beautiful campus, secure, the, uh, the, the folks who live there, I want to say it's 400, yeah, it's $400 a month rent. They get a room, they get shared bathroom, shared community space, you know, shared gymnasium space, uh, again, secured gated parking for their vehicles. And, um, and so people who are making minimum wage can live here and they can afford the rent. And it is a great step for people who are coming out of possibly the shelter or who are down on their luck and have nothing they can get a minimum wage job and they can live here and be safe and they can have access to mail and internet and everything that they need to be able to progress in life. It is a fantastic project. And Dean, if you would take a moment and tell us about your um, experience and what your firm did for this project. Oh, sure. Thank, thank you very much, Eric. And uh, I think one thing I would like to add, Eric, to what, what you had said is certainly it does provide that transitional housing, but the city of Reno and the Community Foundation of Western Nevada also realize that many times as you're helping uh, people get re, uh, reintroduced to the workforce, that sort of thing, that there's a certain uh, educational component. So in addition to providing the, uh, you know, the living space, the beautiful grounds and the beautiful environment, they also provide uh, financial education and other sorts of services to these folks. Again, you know, the city of Reno has been very aggressive and very proactive in helping, really helping people and giving them a hand up. And through that, I mean, this is certainly a wonderful project. Uh, one of the things, as, as Eric said, it was the entire community that really came together on this. And one of the things that we provided to the city, initially it was an old city yard. There was an several old businesses that had a uh, had some uh, potential contamination you know they were an auto body shop there was an old trucking facility and several other things that at least you know had the perception of potential contamination so what so what i did is that we came in and we did a uh, phase one environmental site assessment we evaluated and identified uh, potential constraints, potential sources of contamination. And uh, based on that, then we went and we did what we call a phase two investigation, where we actually did some soil sampling to verify that the contaminant, there were no contaminated soils. And we also did a vapor intrusion study to make sure that there were no uh, potentially harmful vapors that might have been coming from any sort of any sort of contamination of either soil and groundwater. After that, we uh, continued with the team to provide engineering services. We provided things such as, you know, grading, uh, topography. We did a foundation analysis. We helped design the foundations for the uh, for the units, uh, and we uh, helped all through construction. You know, part of it is we wanted to make sure that this was just a showcase project. And part of that is all working together to make sure that everything was done properly. So we, we worked with it all the way through project, uh, project completion. And at this point, and another thing is that this is actually a showcase and actually a model project for, uh, you know, not only the United States, Eric, but haven't we had people come in from, from uh, Canada and perhaps South America just to see how this runs and operates. And, uh, and I guess the last thing I would say, you know, one thing that, you know, it was very, uh, it was pretty wonderful. A gentleman came up and when we were taking the tour as this picture 
you know, notes that's the head of uh, EPA Region 9. So we took him on a tour of the facility and one of the residents came up and, and I think Eric, he told you, he goes, you know, if you guys hadn't put something like this together, I don't think I would be alive today. And I tell you what, that that in and of itself just kind of brings tears to your eyes. But that was the most wonderful moment ever. You know, that was one of the biggest moments I know in my professional career. But again, those are the sorts of things that this grant, especially under the stewardship and leadership of the city of Reno, has been able to do. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you, Eric. Thank you, Dean. And, and let me uh, just add that um, Nova Geotech, Dean's firm at the time, donated all of their time, 100% for this project. Which, and the community is so grateful to them for that. So Dean, we thank you. And uh, if you would go to the next slide, please. Okay, so um, again, so these, are, these next three slides are again, are these four points we talked about. And so environmental remediation, one of the things that we have done in the city we undergrounded the, um, or we submerged, or, or we, uh, you know, we buried, as we call it, the, the uh, railroad line that went through downtown. Um, and that involved removal and mitigation of has hazardous materials. And the city is also working hard on heat island mitigation. And, um, and, and those are all values that this particular grant espouses. Again, because this is an EPA grant, when you come with projects, these are the kinds of things that they're looking for. Uh, next slide, please. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, last year or the year before, the city adopted a new downtown streetscape. Uh, again, part of that, the goal was to bring, uh, to reduce the heat island effect, to bring a nature and, and uh, uh, quote unquote, green growth into the downtown area. One of the things that we did is we, uh, we found a way, to, uh, a strategy to install these underground uh, root cell systems so that we can put large scale trees. Uh, we have a, a one through five category of tree size and um, these underground root cells will allow us to install what we call category four and five street trees. So if you can think about how big a sycamore is, that's the size of tree we can now put in our downtown uh, without the um, sidewalk upheaval and the root intrusion and, uh, and without them dying as many of our trees have in our downtown area. Uh, in addition to that, um, walkability, it, again, sustainability, walkability is a big thing that EPA looks for. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, context sensitive. Um, some of the projects that we have built in our downtown that are context sensitive, the Reno Events Center, um, you know, the bowling stadium, although it's not my, my favorite building downtown, it is massed at least to the right size for our downtown. Um, one of our goals or, or some of our city goals is to increase the walkability and the pedestrian activity in the downtown. And the, this grant again, promotes that. That's specifically uh, one of the things that EPA is looking for. Uh, next slide. So our challenges. Affordable housing, that's at the top of the list of just about everybody. Um, we have a lot of new construction in our downtown right now, but it is not necessarily affordable. The Harris uh, redevelopment, for those of you who are not familiar with it, the Harris Casino, the entire Harris campus, which is two plus blocks, um, is being converted right now into offices and residential space. And uh, we took a tour of it, um, last week with the, with the contractor, the project manager. And at this point they're proposing a grocery store, a small, it's 9,000 square feet, but they have two potential grocers who would come into that space in our downtown. Our downtown is a food desert. That's a social justice issue. Um, it's one of the things, again, that EPA is very concerned and interested in. So we are very excited for that coming in. Um, this grant will, potentially help fund some of the environmental investigations that are required as part of that the project. Dean and I, when we walked through it, they told us that they basically have to scrub every pipe with a toothbrush to remove the asbestos that, that's in there to, to meet the new current standards. And so the investigation and the studying 
not the actual cleanup, but again, the, the, the investigation and the studying in preparation for the cleanup can be funded through this, this grant. Um, we have other opportunities downtown. Um, we have a perception issue. You know, people think downtown is dangerous or dirty or unsafe or boring or, you know, you name it, they, they, you know. And so this grant again can help you in terms of studies and marketing and other type of things to, um, to deal with those kinds of issues. Again, it can't actually clean it up, but it can help you engage the public. It can help you study. It can help you strategize um, what to do. Uh, next, next slide, please. So some of the barriers, uh, capital. You know, it takes a lot of money to develop a project in a downtown area. And um, many times uh, investors are, are afraid to develop in redevelopment areas because of contamination. For those of you who, who are not familiar with it, um, CERCLA, which is the, the federal act regarding um, contamination on, on property, uh, anybody who, uh, under CERCLA, anybody who is in the chain of title on a property that has contaminated can be individually uh, responsible for that cleanup. Uh, my father happens to be a, a, an attorney and I've worked with him on a couple different projects or, or properties where his clients were in the chain of title or were thinking of acquiring a property in the chain of title and, and that had been contaminated in the past. And essentially against what CERCLA says is that it doesn't matter um, if you contributed a tiny bit or 99% of the contamination, you are responsible for 100% of it if you are in the chain of title. And so this is a huge barrier for contaminated or potentially contaminated properties. And what this grant will do was uh, as the city, we can go in or as a developer, you can use this grant and you can um, and, uh, go in and investigate the property and find out if it has legitimate contamination issues or if it's just a perception of contamination. And that is big in terms of marketing properties and, and bringing them to the forefront. Um, as the city, when we are selling our properties that we own downtown, and for us to be able to hand the potential buyer a phase one or, and or a phase two investigation and say, this is the contamination, this is what it will take to remove the contamination, and once you do this, EPA will sign off that this is a clean property. That is a big deal. Okay, um, next slide. Okay, so what sorts of projects can you do uh, with this? Just about anything. This is a very, very broad grant. It can be used again, as Dean mentioned, for public property, publicly owned property. It can be for privately owned property. Uh, the money has to go through um, the city. The city hires, um, we have already contracted with a universal engineering to do all the investigations. Uh, if, if there is something that needs to be done that's a lot permissible under the grant that universal can't do, we can um, use that money with EPA's permission for that activity. But uh, universal engineering has a, a wide variety of staff. And so just about anything that's permissible under the grant, um, they are capable of doing. Um, one of our, I'm, I'm gonna let Dean talk for a quick second. He, they did the um, uh, phase one investigation for the city's super shelter, um, which is located, I call it the armpit of, of the I-80 and 380, but it, it's basically, it's the um, southwest uh, corner there where the city has acquired uh, in excess of, uh, I wanna say it's 17 acres of land, including the old governor's um, bowl and is building a large, large multifaceted um, shelter with uh, um, facilities to assist people, not only just simply staying the night, but to um, get a leg up in life. And so Dean, if you would take a second and tell us a little bit about uh, what your, how your firm's been involved in that. Oh, thank, thank you very much, Eric. And, and, and as Eric said, you know, the great thing about this grant is it is very broad based. And, and I think, uh, you know, to begin with the uh, city of Reno recognized that there was uh, certain issues and constraints with housing, housing affordability and the perception of the downtown area. And part of that is providing a facility for those 
disadvantaged folks to, uh, you know, to have a safe place to live, uh, maybe get, uh, you know, working on getting back into the workforce, because certainly, you know, living on uh, living on the street did not uh, help anyone very much and just just kind of detracted from that perception of the downtown area. So I think that the city, in its wisdom, identified the super shelter facility so that in addition to redeveloping projects in the downtown corridor, they are also going to enhance perception of that downtown corridor by providing a safe and uh, healthy location for those residents to live so that they don't have to, uh, you know, reside on the, you know, on the streets in an unsafe and, and unhealthy manner. So what, uh, what our firm provided was we did a, a phase one environmental site assessment. We identified various underground storage tanks of that property. We identified the potential for asbestos containing materials and lead based paint as part of the phase one investigation. Again, not in the phase one does not do any field work necessarily. It does not quantify or specifically say that there is contamination. It just identifies that there's a potential for that contamination. Then we are in the process now of getting approval through US EPA to perform the phase two investigation, which will actually involve the sampling of the asbestos containing materials and the in any lead-based paint, we're gonna do some subservice investigation. We're gonna evaluate the potential of any vapor intrusion into the new, uh, you know, into the new housing areas. And then depending upon what we find, then we are gonna work along with the city and EPA and identify funding sources through US EPA or other agencies to help provide any cleanup that, that, that might be required. And I think that, uh, and, and the wonderful thing about this job, again, is, you know, in fact, I, I, I gave a tour to another developer of some of the retract properties, and, and he noticed that there were, you know, uh, quite a few indigent folks along 4th Street. And he said, well, what, uh, you know, what's the city doing, you know? And, and I said, well, this is a plan is that the city is very proactive, again, providing a safe and clean place for the uh, people to live, which in turn is going to ch completely change perception of the downtown area and completely change the perception of the development community, which is gonna attract more, more development, more tax dollars. And I think it's just gonna create an absolutely fabulous uh, downtown area for the city of Reno. And again, not uh, and and this grant is is uh, you know just kind of the seed, if you will. You know, I mean, the grant in and of itself isn't going to do anything, but it's under the leadership of uh, the city of Reno, people like Eric, that really have a vision for what this community can become. And this is just a catalyst to help the city reach those goals. And it's just a very exciting program to be part of. And uh, I just appreciate very much uh, working with the city of Reno on it.